Okay, welcome to this interview with uh, John Steele. Um, so um, I'm just going to read a little bit of a bio about John, but just before I do, just to let you know, I mean, I've known John probably ever since we set up Social Progress, which is about eight and a half years ago. I can't actually went, remember when we first met John, but hopefully that will, we might end up with that as we're going through the interview. But I'm just going to read a little bit of a bio out about John, just so if you don't know John, it gives you a little bit of um, information about um, the type of uh, photographer he is. So to sum, sum it up, John is a people photographer. He specializes in capturing people, making them look fun and friendly. Remember people buy from people, so a good first impression is essential. John's been a professional photographer for at least, or for, for the last 15 years, so he's learned a thing or two about how to work with people. One of the best descriptions he's ever heard is, you're corporate but not, and I totally agree with that, which he loves, and yep, so do I, and he tends to be uh, very creative and strays away from what other photographers do, and we've seen that in the stuff that we had done uh, with John. So what services does John offer? Well, he offers a personal branding sessions. These are perfect for the time staff, busy business person who wants some great pictures in a very little time, um, there's loads more of information of this if you're interested on the website. He works with uh, companies and tells their stories. Stories sell um, and uh, John captures your business in a very creative way uh, through the people in the organization. This results in a brilliant story for your business and is excellent for content on social media. It's not just businesses that John photographs. John is a multi-award winning wedding photographer his style, again, is very creative, documentary photographer. John believes in capturing the whole day and not just the bride and groom standing in a field. He has a separate website for this, which uh, you can check out, uh, which is, um, well, it's on the screen anyway, so you can see it on there. Uh, John's photography, sorry, John photographs families. Once again, this is done in a fun, relaxed way. He uses the out outdoor environment to capture natural photos. Once again, if you have any questions, do give John a shout. It'll, you know, direct you as to where you can see more of the type of work that he does. Um, finally, John also photographs fitness photo photography, gym shoots, that kind of thing. These aren't the typical gym shots that people see. Once again, he captures people in a natural documentary fashion, which leads to amazing images. This is perfect for any sponsored athlete or personal brand, uh, personal trainer who may need lots of images on social media. And basically, um, if it moves um, and, and talks, John photographs it, which I think is an excellent way of kind of explaining the sort of photography that, that you do, John. And uh, I have to say, you know, the stuff that you've done for us, you've done a couple of photo shoots for us, nothing... Um, very recent but obviously when we get out of lockdown that's one of the first things that we're going to be organizing is another photo shoot with yourself uh, for the team because I think there's nothing better than the thing that I love about the work that you do is you really make people feel um, sort of relaxed and we just get on with it and which is great you know and it's it is all that is a hard thing for somebody to do and I don't think that a lot of people um, realize the value of that um, it's okay to get a picture and just get everybody stood there in a line. And I wouldn't say anybody can do that, but lots of people can do that, that, that let's say. But what I do like about the stuff that you do is you, um, you make people feel relaxed and therefore people, you get those natural shots, which is what people want to see at the end of the day. So, so um, welcome along, John. Um, Hello. So, um, I know that we've just got one um, logo on there, but obviously we there's four different parts to your business, and I'm sure we'll talk about those as we go through. What I didn't want to do is just put one logo up there on that first slide, and people think, oh, it's just you just do one type of uh, uh, photography. We know that you do so much more, but we'll, it will come out in the conversation and stuff. So, Sounds so good. We've prepped a few questions for you. So, uh, Anna, um, we're just going to talk you through these. So first question and over to you is, tell me how you got into photography and how long have you been a professional photographer? I mean, you said 15 years on that intro there, but how did you get into it? Yeah, I thought this was an easy podcast then because I thought you were just going to do what talking. So, yeah. 
<laughs> it's it's time for me to do some of that talking, isn't it? Yeah. Um, right. How did I get into it? Uh, I'll give you the uh, the short version because it can go on for a while. Um, so basically, I was doing a sports degree, and as part of my sports degree, I had to do an events management module, and I I used to be like massive into skateboarding at the time. So I, I had to create, I had to think of an event, create an event, run the event and everything else to go with it. So I obviously went down the skateboarding route. But again, being creative, I thought there's so many like skateboarders out there who are creative, but they never have anything to like a anywhere to show people. So I came up with like a skateboard art show and I called it Smiley Culture. And it was completely different. It was like, it had like non traditional events, things like see how many uh, uh, bins you can jump over on your skateboard and that just went crazy. But um, I asked my friend who was a photographer at the time to come and take some pictures and he came and like we did the event, the events were a big success. And then I said, oh, I, you know, can I come and look at the pictures? So I walked into his room and he had like a Mac computer, an iMac, and uh, I saw this amazing picture like of the seaside I said, oh, where'd you download that from? He's like, I took it at weekend. It's like, right, I want to learn how to do that. So I bought a camera and just thought, right, I'm going to learn how to take pictures like that. And that was it. And the rest it's... is history, really. So, but surely, <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure it's not quite so simple because I know, I mean, well, I... it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've taken photos and, and you've come and helped me look at, you know, some of those, uh, you know, how to get my camera set up. And no way would I ever be. A professional photographer it's it's just not inbuilt into me i've not got the no. i think I the thing is no well i think the thing is you have to spend a lot of time just i'm gonna say faffing about but i don't know i don't i'm gonna say faffing <laughs> I, I wrote yesterday faffing so yeah the faffing's good no, but yeah, that's, it, I, that's how you learn isn't it you you go you faff you do it wrong and then you look at why you've gone wrong you go right why have i done wrong and like, oh, it's because of that. So then you go out next time, faff, and then you get it right. It's like, right, that's right. So that's registered now. You learn from your mistakes, don't you? In you life. do. And I think, I think with anything, you've got to have enough of an interest to want to pursue where you're going wrong to get it right, is what yeah. I would say. So, and for me, um, I'm interested in it, but not to the degree of I want to know everything about it so i'm probably one no. of these that is like somewhere between i don't want something that's just point and shoot and that's it but i yeah. also don't want it to be you know i don't want it to go into it I, i'd rather use somebody like you who knows what they're doing than yeah yeah, yeah no i i agree but um i'm the least technical photographer in the world like i do know all the stuff but i don't want to tell people i i, I don't want to come along and go oh you know i'm on f8 did you know that and i was like who cares like Uncle Bob at weddings, he's always telling me that what he's doing, but I don't need to know. I just yeah. need to take a picture and people to like it. I'll end off, you know. Yeah. You don't need to know about ISOs and whatever. I think sometimes though it's about having the right eye, um, and you know you, that is something you've either perfected over time or you you understand. Or there's a lot of people that just take a picture, and we've seen it so many times for social media and somebody sent us a picture and it's like oh my god we can't post that up that's horrendous because they've mm -hmm. taken something themselves so so it is about you know making sure that you've got all that uh, in place and stuff, yeah so. the, the, there is a lot it's, it's like it is a long time that i've been doing it i don't know how long it is to be honest i said 15 years but i don't think it is it's probably about 12. Have a long, well. i don't know i ain't got a skill with it. i've no idea what day it is today to be honest <laughs> so so about Eight and a half years that you've been going. Yeah. I was trying to work backwards then. So I, no, there was no way I was doing it like six years before you. I don't know. 10, 12, no idea. Been doing it well. And I couldn't even tell you, John, where we first met, if I'm honest. I can. Can you? Yeah, Big House Link. Was it? Yeah, it was um, Big, oh, Big House yeah. Link. Or was it Big House Link? It was the ladies one, wasn't it? Ah, where I, I had to set, I had to yeah. set up a studio to photograph people on a white background, and if I, everyone knows how much I love white back backgrounds, but you've got a white background right now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd do that to mess you about. It just covers um, it covers a <laughs> book. Uh, it covers mess, doesn't it? Like there's yeah. a bookcase behind me. It looks a bit messy. So I was like, 
I'll put a black background up and I thought, no, I'll do it as white because Janet will pick up on that. <laughs> yeah. Because she knows how much I love white backgrounds. But, but now no, you I, mention it, yeah. yeah, yeah. That yeah. is where we met. Um, yeah, yeah, because I, I took the pictures. I had like loads of pictures to photograph in like a very short duration. And then I sent them out. And then you came back and says, right, can you turn this picture around? Because it's looking the wrong way. I want to look in the right hand side on LinkedIn. So then, I remembered you from there, and then I used to see you at like all the exhibitions, but I was scared of you. I was like, oh, that's Janet, and I'm scared of her. So I didn't talk to you for ages. And then I started talking to you, and I thought, oh, you're actually all right. So, yeah. yeah, I am once you get to know me. Yeah, I know, but, but I, was, I was proper scared of you. <laughs> I was intimidated. All she wants is high fives. <laughs> Do you know what? I have heard that before, that somebody else was frightened me, but I have no idea why people are frightened me. There's nothing to be frightened of, to be fair, but there you go. It's just one of those things. But now you mention it, I do remember it was Ladies for Networking. And it ladies was for Networking, yeah. And it was at Prego's, and I remember... Yeah, I know. Because well, I had to do the Brighouse link, I had to take some photos for that, and then they got me mm. back to do, like, the Ladies for Networking. I'll and, like, Brighouse I mean. link, I think I'd shot about two pictures, but then... Like, ladies for networking, blimey, I must have done about 30 in about half an hour. It was ridiculous. I'll so, see if you can dig the photo out. I've probably still got it somewhere, but I won't well, I have. do now. <laughs> I've, I've got them all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, one of the things that I wanted to ask you is, um, and I'm sure that this is a, it is a hard question, and we did, I did ask you this before this interview now, you give me because, an hour, didn't you? So, yeah. Yeah, that's all. So, uh, what's your favourite photo ever, ever? Uh, either taken by you or someone else. I have got the three that you sent me over on 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 screen, so I can talk. You know, can put each one of those up, and you can talk us through those, John, if you want to do so. So. Okay. Uh, okay. First one, which is one of my favourites as well. So yeah. So that's one. Me. Yeah, this one. It's an old favourite. Um, so this this I took at a wedding. Um, and it's not faked in any way at all, because I don't fake anything. Mm. Uh, this was a wedding, it's Kirsty and Richard. Um, Kirsty's the girl falling off. Yeah. Um, and they had a lovely wedding at Hornington Manor. And, and then I took them out for like a couple of like five minutes of bridal portrait, of a group portrait, uh, group, bride and groom portraits. And most of my couples don't want that. They just want a few pictures, so I make it as relaxed as I can. And we got some nice stuff. And then while we were there, in the morning, I'd seen people blowing up space hoppers. And after we'd done this session, like five minute session, I says, right, what are the space hoppers for? He says, oh, we're staying um, next next day and we're having a barbecue. So we've got space hoppers for kids. He says, no, you're having a space hopper race now. So I ran and got them. And uh, then she, she started to sit on it and she couldn't get on. It's not the easiest thing to sit in uh, is a wedding gown. Um, so I've been told it's not, I know. Um, so, but then I saw her and she, she set off and then all of a sudden she just fell backwards. But then these blue shoes just went up in the air. And I was like, I, I just knew I'd got it. So yeah, I kind of came, got quite famous for that one. It's won a multitude of awards as that one. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's just one of the moments. I don't fake it, so. Which I, that's the thing. I, I love the photos that you take where they're just, you can just see that it's people just, you know, enjoying that whole experience and stuff. And that, you know, that definitely is the case on that one. I love it. Um, yeah. you did, you, we haven't got the picture, but I know there was another one that you won an award for. And it was, um, was it the bridesmaids in, in like a, a chair or something and they were, either side there were one face like one the, the sleeping ones yeah that was brilliant like, i love that photo and that won an award didn't it so i know well, we we're at the sleeping screen. sleeping mm. we're at the sleeping flower girls like yeah 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 that was literally just <laughs> i'm photographing this wedding and uh let's just say it wasn't my usual kind of clientele but i didn't know when they booked it but um like our outside it was in a castle and uh, all of a sudden, this this woman, like the, the the bride's mom, who you didn't mess with, she just said, "Here, come here!" And like she just showed me this picture. These these two girls just sleeping on these chairs, and I was like, "Oh, let's have that." So yeah, yeah just but it's just moments. Like I see people setting stuff up, and it it just looks fake. Mm. But you can't you can't fake it, you know. So much stuff happens during a wedding day that you just 
if you keep your eyes open, then you know there's something going to happen. And sometimes it's it's more than that. Sometimes it's waiting for that moment as well. You see, you find somewhere that you think, right, it looks brilliant for a photo, and sometimes you're waiting five minutes for something to happen, and sometimes it doesn't happen. But sometimes you just get that amazing moment. So I'd say a lot of it's luck, but then a lot of it's kind of pre-planning and just knowing what's happening and like right okay i don't need to do this for like 10 minutes so i've kind of got five minutes to play so yeah that's how i do it really do you also yeah. find that there's certain venues that lend themselves to getting i mean i don't want you to kind of you, you don't have to say who those are but i'm just curious as if you're kind of thinking oh the wedding's going to be at such and such a venue well, that's, that means I'm going to get some really good shots there because I know there's that that I can take pictures around or like that one, the backdrop of that is just, you know, it is a, it's a brilliant backdrop, but, you know, I guess there's certain ones that you kind of know it's going to be, there's going to get, you're going to get some good go photos from it and stuff. Uh, you haven't know really because it's, all, it's always about the people. For me, it's all about the people like, I see other photographers, like if, if they have traditional or elegant in all the like the, the, the kind of marketing materials you know they're just going to set everything up mm. so um for me i just try and capture moments i want people laughing because you like for a great photo you need um great composition good lighting and a good moment mm. and that's the three elements that make a photo so like if you just sometimes you'll go to this amazing like scene and but nothing's happening mm. you know but what sometimes you'll be you know, you might be just in a dingy corner, but there's something really funny happening and you know you can make a great photo. So for me, it doesn't matter. I can make a picture anywhere. Yeah. You know, I've done a photo shoot in your office. Yeah, like, well, that's true, uh, yeah. So <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's just knowing what's happening. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I think a lot of people hire these amazing places just for photos. Mm. You don't need that. You just need... Sometimes it's just you need a bush behind you or something <laughs> like this. Uh, it, it is that. Yeah. It's, the, it's the people and having the, you know, it, it, I guess it's like anything. You And our business is very similar in this respect. So it's like you can probably tell, I, I know when we meet somebody, whether the sort of client that we're going to get on well with and it's yeah, going to be a good experience and they're yeah. going to get something out of it and so are we. And other ones where you think actually... I hope they don't go ahead because I actually don't want that work, which sounds really pretentious. No, no. I don't mean it to be, but I think there is certain ones. And as you get more into your business and you probably agree with me, John, I'm sure that you kind of think, actually, I don't want to work with that. I do it all the time. Like when, when I meet like a bride and groom at a wedding fair or somewhere, it's so important that I get on with them. Mm -hmm. Like it's funny. I, I had, um, I did a wedding fair not so long back in Sheffield and, uh, I then emailed my, I took like the details of people and follow up and there was one and she, this, this mother was just a nightmare. I could tell she was going to be like so hard work. So I didn't even email her because mm -hmm. I thought I don't need that in my life. Um, just yesterday I received an email. So it was all about like a booking a wedding for next year. I thought, all right, yeah, great. I'm available. And then I get all these questions and I thought, you know what? I'm just going to ring her up. And it was the bride's mum. It was her one it and she's like oh we met you at so and so i was like yes i remember you and uh i was like oh no no but there's certain people you can tell but now if i meet them and i don't think i can work with them i say no yeah because it's it's not worth it it's like yeah. I, I if i could tell if i'm the right photographer for someone um and then other times i'm hired in a business situation and people just want their thing mm -hmm. and i can tell that it's not going to be good Mm. So sometimes like I'll kind of work with them and try to then get them to my way of thinking, but other times I can't. And then I see the results and I was like, don't even tell anyone I've taken them. Mm. I don't, I don't want, I'll, you know, I won't even blog them or anything because, yeah. but sometimes it's beyond my control. So mm. yeah. Certain yeah. ones you're proud of. And I guess, and there's other ones where you just don't feel it and they don't work. For yeah. Some, sometimes yeah. like you come back from a shoot and all you want to do is like, get your memory card out of your camera and upload them and start editing them. Other times you're like, I just leave them for a week because mm -hmm. like you just, yeah. till, it, till your deadline's up and it's like, oh, I'm going to have to deal with them. So mm -hmm. but I don't, I don't want to run a business like that. That's why, that's why I don't photograph products. Mm -hmm. You know, last week you were asking me if I could photograph some products and I was like, 
it's not me, you know. And I, I actually value that more. If I ask yeah, yeah. you to do something and you say, it's not really what I want to do, I, I prefer that than you go and say yes and then do, do something that inspires you or is the best for you or for the client to be the end, mm. at the end of the day. You might as well stick to the stuff that you enjoy doing and, and that you're good at than try and do something that you're not, in my opinion. But yeah. Yeah. Okay, so next photo is this one. So tell me about this one. Right, and so this, this if you look at bottom right, there's um, a Fearless Award. Mm -hmm. So Fearless, Fearless is like kind of the, the Oscars for wedding photographers. Um, so it's kind of a big deal, really. Um, so I think in 40,000 pictures, like, so that kind of one, there were like 20 pictures at one out of 40,000. So that was one of them. Um, but yeah, it's, um, this is taken at like 1.37 a.m. after a wedding. So yeah, it's not like a nine to five job, is it? No. Um, so yeah, this, this, um, this my friend, um, it's funny because I've known, this is like one of my oldest best friends, known him for like 35 years or something. And it was another one of my best friend's weddings and uh, he'd asked me to photograph it. And stay here. He was just, he was the best man. He was absolutely bricking himself about the speech. And all day he just didn't enjoy himself. He didn't relax. He just he, he couldn't have a drink until he got the speech done. And he absolutely nailed the speech. And then all of a sudden he just started to drink and he just played catch up. And so like this is at Taken at Woodlands uh, Hotel in Leeds. And yeah, like kind of the wedding finished at 12 but everyone was staying over so like kind of one o'clock everyone went in the other room they all like started singing on piano and stuff and i just saw steve just fall asleep and uh, i saw he had someone had put this clutch bag in his hand and then i just saw these two dogs just looking at him i thought i'm having that so yeah, yeah it's just again it's just a snapshot but it's just knowing how to frame it because i could have just like zoomed in on him yeah. but it wouldn't have been that interesting, but when you've like kind of used the composition of the dogs looking, it's just, yeah, it's just different, you see. So mm -hmm. that stands out, but I'll, I just love stuff like that. You know, yeah. this is me. Yeah, this isn't a bride and groom in a field, like you said. Yeah, no, that's, a, I, I love that photo. That's brilliant. I've, I've not seen that one before. So when you, you said not? it over, no, I haven't. So I'm, uh, I'm rubbish at marketing myself. Uh. I know that one, yeah. <laughs> um, but that that is a lovely photo. I love that one. And I do know Woodlands Hotel as well. So I can't yeah. say I've ever seen those pictures, to be honest, but there you go. No, but you don't look and, until no. you're kind of like in that situation and you're like, hold on, there's two dogs there looking at him. I'm like, it just needs to be got. So, you know, it, it was such a grab shot. I didn't even clear like the glass from the bottom right. I could Photoshop it out, but I don't like doing that. No. You know, I don't like faking it. So yeah, it's much it's better just, when it's natural. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But, you know, that means a lot to him. And it also means a lot to Stuart, whose wedding it was. Because it's all about time. It's about like how he was feeling on the day, how he was mm -hmm. actually so stressed that he couldn't enjoy himself. And then he just, yeah, he, he just had six hours of drinking then. And like... <laughs> And just fall asleep. I, and I think a lot of uh, a lot of best men, best man, best men, will resonate with that because there'll be so many that like well, oh, can't, yeah. have, can't have a drink until I've done my speeches, and then it's like, right, get me my first drink, let me yeah, relax yeah. and enjoy it. So yeah, it's, rooms it's as crazy. well. I've seen so many, so much food wasted, and people just not enjoying until they've had the speech, mm -hmm. and then it's like, whew, right, now I can enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the but funny things at weddings really I bet are. those are when you get the best photos as well in some respects. Oh, yeah, because when everyone's, like, not relaxed, mm. everyone's, like, really stiff and, oh, what do we do? Where do we stand? I was like, I don't care. Just get on with it. Mm. You know, talk to your friends. I'll mm. capture what's going on. Don't worry about me. Yeah. Like, it's better if I'm, if you don't see me or if you see me, but you think I'm, like, a family mm. member. Yeah. So, so yeah, but that that's how I describe. Tell people what I'm going to be like on a wedding. I always tell them like I'm like a uh, rainbow-coloured chihuahua. So like if 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 you were if you were just like doing this Zoom call now and a rainbow-coloured chihuahua came in, you'd be like, whoa, there's a rainbow-coloured chihuahua. What's that doing here? And then it'd go off, do its thing. Then it come back. It's whoa, it's that rainbow-coloured chihuahua again. After five minutes, you're like, oh, it's that dog again, isn't it? 
So that's what I'm like, as soon as I turn up somewhere, I'm like, whoa. But then as soon as like they get the settle in and get used to me, it's like, right. Oh, it's just John, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And a lot of times, like, this is this is a really good kind of compliment I get. It's like people are like, um, how do you know the fam family? What relation are you? I was like, oh, I'm just a fast photographer. I was like, but you're blending in so well. I was like, well, yeah, it's my job, isn't it? Yeah. Mm, yeah. yeah. Or sometimes people are saying, I didn't even know they were a photographer at a wedding. So, I yeah. must admit, I've, I've done that when we've been at conferences and stuff, and I've, gone, I've seen photos afterwards and gone, how on earth did John get that picture? I never saw him take that. So, and that for me is like, shows that you're kind of in the moment and you know, I'm, I'm doing what I should be doing, which is talking to people, but unaware that you are around in the background taking those shots, which is, yeah. you know, again, I think that's commendable to be, you know, yeah. in, in such a way that you're just there taking the pictures really. And that people well, that's it. And, and at conferences, I'm networking as well and people don't, that it kind of takes it away that I'm taking photos as well because I'm just chatting to folk. Mm. Like it's not easy. I just I just do it. I'm just like yeah, yeah do it without thinking really. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so this one. Tell me about this one. So I was interested right, when you sent me this one over. I was like, ah, wow. I took, so took my guys did not care for probably what everybody is going is like. I wonder what they're taking pictures of because that's yeah, yeah. immediately what I wanted when I saw it. It's like what they're taking pictures of. That's really interesting. Yeah. So when you said, what's your fa most favourite picture of all time? My, um, my creative brain just went, oh, it just went mental. I was thinking of all these like war pictures that are so dramatic. And then I was thinking of like classics like Henri Bresson, Cartier. And then I was thinking Martin Parr. And I thought, you know what? The last picture that I actually thought, which actually stopped me in my tracks with this one. And this is, um, this is the last royal wedding. And um, it, I just loved it because everyone there is with the mobile phones, taking pictures. And this woman who's seen, probably seen quite a lot in her life has just thought, you know what? I'm just going to watch this with my eyes. Yeah. This is special. I don't care about taking a picture. I don't care about putting it on Snapchat or Instagram or Facebook saying, ooh, look at me, look at me. It's like, I want to see this in, mm -hmm. with my own eyes. It's, it's like if I go to... Um, if I go to somewhere kind of touristy, the last thing I want to do is take a picture. I don't care. I want to look at it. I don't want to like just go, oh, look at this, a picture that I'm never going to use. It'll stay on my camera, but I've spoiled the moment because I didn't actually appreciate it. Mm. Um, and I think we live our lives through like mobile devices and like we don't actually take things on board anymore. Mm. So this, this was like, when I first saw this picture, I was like, wow. So that's, that's why I chose it. It's not, it's not the best composition. It's not great lighting, but like the moment, it's amazing. And I remember I was having a very similar conversation to that. Um, do you remember when, I think it was, a, yeah, it was the second time that um, the Tour de Yorkshire came to yeah. our office and we were sat opposite, um, on, we were sat on the road as it came round and I'm in the middle of a roundabout laying down. <laughs> and the caravan were coming past and all the cyclists. Yeah. And, and I remember you saying that to me. It's like you've got all these people that are here with their mobile phones taking pictures, but not one of them are actually watching. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The cyclists and the caravans going past. They're all so keen to take it on, on a mobile device, but none of them are actually um, yeah. in the moment. And I always remember that because um, as you... Uh, probably aware John I go to a lot of um, concerts and stuff and mm. whilst I do mm. take some pictures I don't take a lot of pictures and the reason yeah, no. being is I'm there I've spent money on a ticket I want to enjoy it I want to enjoy That's the true. moment and uh, and actually see it with my eyes rather than trying to capture something that is probably going to be a rubbish picture anyway to be honest. Well that's it yeah but everyone's so pleased uh, oh, so keen to show them how great they are because they're there Mm. It's like just enjoy, enjoy mm. it. You know, it's like mm. yeah. It's like when we were doing that Tour de France thing, like Tour de Yorkshire, and I was trying to take some pictures just to kind of for you, just to show you like yeah, yeah. the social yeah, progress yeah. building yeah. in the background and like the the kind of the Tour de Yorkshire. But then I still had some kid who were pushing in, who were like sitting in front of me with the mobile phone. Like there was me, 
with two cameras and then there were some press people and then this person were just still walking in front of us. I was like, you just don't get it, do you? No. You, don't, you don't understand, like. Yeah. So, so now, like, when I can, I just look with my eyes. Mm. And even when, like, going, walking around here, people are like, are you taking your camera? I was like, no. Because whatever I capture is not going to be what your eyes can see. Mm. Uh, so, no. Um, mm. we're, yeah. lucky. we're lucky to have the surroundings that we do as well, where we're well, We're hardly roughing it our way in Malcolm. <laughs> Okay, so next question. Um, tell me what you like about what you do. I think we've probably talked a little bit about that as we've gone through things, but, um, you know, just talk me through that. So I guess what inspired you to, to, um, to be a professional photographer, what is it that you like about the whole um, essence of being a photographer? Yeah, um, I don't know what inspired me to be a professional photographer. Madness, I think. <laughs> Um, but what I love doing is I love photographing people, you know, I love, right, what I love is I love getting to the real person, like, because some people have all this bravado, and they've got this kind of real persona that they're, you know, that the show on social media and everything else, and people ask me to photograph them, I was like, no, I don't want to photograph you, you're, you're an idiot, and then once you get past that, which takes me about two minutes, you're like, Right, I've got the real person now. This is who I want to capture. I want to capture this person. Not this, like, look at me, look at me, I'm Mr. So-and-so. I was like, right, I want to know what you're doing in your family life. Like, mm. So I love doing that. I also love telling stories as well. Like, I love how a pitch can tell a story. So, but I tell the stories around people. So, for example, if I go to, like, a manufacturing plant, People show me around and go, oh, look at this. We just paid 200,000 pounds for this machine. I was like, it's a machine, isn't it? It's like, can you take a picture? I was like, no. But then if you show someone using that machine, it brings it to life. It's like, then like, oh, actually, this is what it does. This is really interesting. So, yeah, I love all that, really. Like, just telling pictures, meeting people. I love meeting people. Just having a laugh with folk. Doing something, something different as well. Like, I think, I think... <laughs> it's a weird one, but it's not. So um, I, I remember going with, with my husband, Peter, to a, an art gallery. Um, it must be, it's well before we set up social progress. So it must be 10 to 15 years ago. And we went to, a sh to Sheffield to this art gallery. Um, it was just something to do with the kids because actually we didn't have a lot of money. And it's like, right, well, where can we go? Yeah. What can we do? Right, we'll go to this art gallery. This is talk. Let's go along. And it was all about impressionist paintings and, uh, and, and Peter loves impressionist paintings as I do, but he's got a real, um, a real, it really, you know, it's something that he really enjoys uh, sort of seeing. Um, and what I found really inspiring with it, which is actually what you've just done with the last three photos that we've just looked at is you can look at a, a, a painting or a photo and just go, oh, yeah that's, yeah, that's really nice. But if you don't know the story behind it, it's just it's just a picture or it's just a photo or yeah. whatever. But once you know the story and the background to it, it, it completely changes that whole experience of it, um, which is what we got from going to the art gallery. And actually what you've just done with those three pictures that we've just put up on screen is exactly that. You've kind of brought them to life by telling yeah. the story be behind something that somebody can look at and be, wow, that's a great photo because it's captured whatever, whatever. But if you don't know the story behind it, 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 it changes that whole dynamic of it really, doesn't it? So it, it does, but I'm terrible with art galleries. I walk in and go, what the heck is that? What, <laughs> what, 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 nowhere. Like, yeah, like I used to, um, I used to do night photography. I got known for doing night photography like uh, 10 years ago. No idea. Um, I used to like write um, ma magazine articles when I was photographed like star trails and stuff at night. And it was completely new. Hardly anyone, and, and anyone had ever seen it. And uh, I went to some galleries and I was like, what's the emotion behind this? I was like, it's a shack in a field. No, no, no. What's the story behind it? Well, shack in the field in it but i can't do all that blurb and i see on um, some photographers instagrams and stuff how they just talk like 
long-winded about a really bad picture to make it try and, to try and make it look good. I was like, it's a bad picture. Like, just don't even put, yeah. So I can see where you're coming from, but sometimes I think people hide behind all this, uh, this, this no. interpretation and stuff. I think it depends what the interpretation is. If they're trying to make something out of a, if they've got a lovely photo and then they're trying to get a story out of the photo, that's different to taking a picture and telling the story of the picture. There's a difference yeah. in that. So, which, which is kind of what I think we're both agreeing on that one, really. So, okay. So, um, tell me about the funniest wedding you've ever photographed and why. Um, been thinking about this one as well. I don't know because every wedding can be funny it all depends on the people mm. so like again you can set up all these funny things but it's not funny but then you have all these moments i've had everything happen at weddings um good and bad but you know i think one of the funniest that i did um i met them and i knew they were bonkers straight away then we did a pre-wedding shoot with them and they invited me to like the barbecue. I thought, oh, sounds like they know what they're doing. They didn't even know how to like the barbecue, did they? And then we had like, we had them stood on benches with flamingos and stuff in the garden. I knew they were mental. Like, like the groom was desperate for me to take a picture out of his bathroom window of him in the garden. I was like, what? So the wedding, um, they had a Halifax registry office. And they walked there. But then for like they met at Acapulco's nightclub in Halifax, which is it's not the nicest, you know. <laughs> you stick to the floor a bit. But because of because they'd met there, they'd arranged for it to go to be open and it was in December. Um before that we went round Halifax, so we went went to Santa's Grotto so that bride could sit on Santa's knee. And then we uh, we just wandered around, dancing with buskers, just messing around. Then we went to Acker, and uh, they'd opened it specially for us, and we did some group shots on the dance floor with everyone stuck to it. Then we had to go upstairs to the roof terrace because how the bride and groom met was the groom was going to have a fight with the gr bride's brother. So they had to reenact that. And it, we're all just mental. The, they had quite a bit of alcohol. And then we went to Brighouse Cricket Club and they had like gnomes everywhere. Like just decorated with gnomes, like for no apparent reason. And they had a, the humanist ceremony, many, but then they had a umpire band come and the umpire band were mental. They, they did these games where people would put tights on their head with a snooker ball and then you'd have to go go do like blindfolded skittles with your head knocking them over and oh it was just mental the whole thing was mental but all the people like they were just a right laugh yeah and then there was another one i did in scotland and uh, they had this beautiful kind of village hall but i wasn't the photographer i was a guest but they had their friend doing the photography but then she couldn't be bothered so i ended up taking over um and so I was like photographing the bride and groom. Where they were getting married, it was overlooking this sea on a big cliff in a marquee for like 300 people. And then all of a sudden, like, um, oh, I forgot to mention the 80, 80 mile an hour winds. But this marquee just ripped and it was trying to take off. And it was just like the most dangerous thing I've ever seen. But everyone then thought, hold on, we've got keys for the village hall. So they went and got all the furniture and the tables out and shoved them in vans and went down to the village hall, set up within three hours. They had like a hot meal and everything. It was just insane because everyone else had been wedding over. Mm. Uh, and then after that, like it was so busy in there, you couldn't photograph because the village hall held 120 people, whereas there were 300. So squeeze was uh, kind of the word. Mm. And then afterwards they had all this drumming and the fire that police got called kicked them out and then they had to go back to the original location but the marquee was gone and there was like this little log cabin so there's there's just a few of them that had like a massive party under the stars it, it's mental yeah yeah, yeah. yeah but, but all sorts happens at every wedding you know yeah. there's always well, something does, yeah i guess yeah. everybody's everybody's wedding is memorable for some for some reason i guess um it's just um 
It's just what those memorable moments are. Ours, bizarrely enough, and I think I've told you about this before, John, is we didn't get our wedding photos until I think it was about 10 months after the wedding. Blooming photographers. I know. That's quick, that. That's quick for me. <laughs> well, no, it, it's bad. It's really bad. Um, a lot of cash, cash flow issues, but we are talking a long time back. So it's nearly, yeah. it's nearly 40 years ago, but um, yeah, it was um, interesting, but it was memorable. And actually the, the photographer didn't turn up to take photos before before the wedding, before the actual ceremony. No. He didn't turn up to the house to take photos, which he should have been doing. And there was all sorts of things wrong with it, but that's just it, isn't it, right? Sometimes you get not the right photographer, let's say. So. No, you don't. And it was completely different back then. Like usually mm -hmm. it was just an old bloke with a tripod outside the church sticking some groups. Correct. You know, exactly on, what it was, on yeah. film we had 24, 36 exposures and that's it, isn't it? Yeah. So, so now it's like more of a documentary whole day thing you know not, not a lot of people do it as long as i do my record for a wedding is 21 hours which i never want to oh. beat <laughs> like no idea why but yeah like me, most of my weddings like 16 17 hour long days but mm. you know it's because i care so much mm. yeah to capture it all and it's i do I, I love drunk dancing to be honest that, that's where it's happening for me because i can relax because yeah. everything else, is, it's all done. I know everything's done, so it's like, right, now I can just relax and just, mm. you know, gloves are off, I can just get in there. What probably a lot of people don't know as well is you don't drink. I don't drink. So no. there, there you go, you know, you know, a drunk and, you know, everybody's have, having a laugh and getting absolutely hammered and you're probably just still on your cups of tea. I don't, I don't really drink much, to be honest. just water. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Aye. Okay. Um, final question. So mm. recently, John, you, well, it was only like, was it last weekend? Yeah, I think it was actually. Um, you took pictures of myself and my husband um, outside our door doing the door stop challenge. Um, yeah. Because we're at lockdown at the moment. And so you took yeah. it upon yourself to do this. And uh, tell me a little bit more about kind of, because I'd never heard of it until you actually put it up on social media that really? you're doing this door stop. Yeah, I didn't know anything about it. So so um, there's probably quite a few of the people that don't know about it, but tell me a bit about how you got into that and what it is and uh, and why you're doing it is probably one of the most important bits as well. Fair news. Right, what well, is, um, I think as soon as lockdown came, a lot of photographers were like, right, what do I do? All my weddings are cancelled, I don't know what to do, I've got no income. And so people would be just going around and photographing people just in the like, in, in their own homes, just standing outside the doorstep, and then they'd just give them some money. And I, I've seen people charging up to like £60 for this, to like get one picture, and then, then they charge more for prints. I was like, how can you do that? It's, it's just wrong. And then like, I saw a lot of people doing it, and I was like, I don't want to do this. This was early on, before like we were allowed to kind of go out. So people were like breaking the rules. I thought, I'm not happy with that. You know, but then the one weekend, I was just in my room and I just thought, you know what, I ain't done out. I ain't gone out. I'm just going mental because I, I had all this work to do and my computer just wasn't working on its own. Like, needed me to use it. And I was just looking at the screen. And I thought, I need to get out. I'm going mental. So I thought, right, what can I do? I thought, I'll take some doorstep pictures. But I just thought, I want to do it for charity. Don't want to do it for me. I'm not making anything out of it. And apart from, you know, it's great marketing for me because I live in a little village and it's good that people know who I am. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very good at hiding. You know, um, it's, it's, I don't know how you've got me doing this, to be honest, because I'm usually well. I I no, no, it's just, um, yeah, you've just got me in a bit of a reflective mode. Um, but yeah, it's like, I just thought, Let's just go out, meet some people, take some nice pictures for them and make some money for charity. So literally put a message on the Facebook page saying, email me um, if you want the Dorset picture. I'll give you a, like, a digital like, print for free and then, you know, pay some money for charity. Five, ten pounds, that's all I'm asking. It's a local charity, so that's what I did. So I've, I've made it as easy as I can, but still people struggle. People still can't email me. They're still like sending me messages on Facebook and like just replying to a comment or pressing like. And it's like, 
you don't get it, do you? I've, I've made it easy. Just just do it. So, yeah. So now I just go along. I've got a pre-arranged time. Turn up. Just meet them. Have a little chat. And then just take some pictures. If I can make them a little bit more interesting, I will. Some people are up for it. Some people aren't. The one I've just taken, we had two, two girls doing some ballet dancing and playing badminton. So, yeah. It's... Uh, yeah. But it's, it's so far we've raised £135 for a Crossroads charity in Meltham. Um, but I think people are over it now. People just want to get out. They all seem um, to be going to the seaside. So <laughs> it's, well, they did it the weekend, didn't they, really? So. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know. I think a lot of people think there's strings attached because no one else does anything for free. There's always, mm. oh, how much do we have to pay for this print and stuff? It's like, just, you know, give give five or ten pounds to uh, the charity and mm. I'll give you a print like well I'll give you a, like a link and I, I always say I'll give them one picture but I don't I'll give them like ten so mm. yeah I know we needed hours we we got quite a, a few sent over and they were straight up straight after it was within an hour you'd sent them to us which were a bit I was quite surprised how quickly they came over which was lovely but I also well, I knew you waited a long time for your wedding pictures so I had to make it up <laughs> Mm. The other thing that I would say is I think that there are well, there's two things. So I think there's one is that um, what what I'm seeing uh, quite a lot of at the moment um, is that um, a lot of people they want to support local businesses. Yeah. So, but you have to let people know that you're there so that they know that you can support them because otherwise they'll assume that maybe you're not working or whatever, whatever. It could be that you're really busy or it could be that you're furloughed or whatever. So, so it's good that you did put yourself out there, John, and put that up there. And also I think, you know, um, it's a weird one really, because I, I know my thought was, well, do I, do I want to take a picture of when we're in this lockdown position and sort of situation? And part of me, didn't because I don't really want to be in a lockdown position and whatever but then also it's like another 10 years from now I'm none of us are ever going to forget this no you know? no it's historic that's exactly. what I mean and yeah. so it's it is good ca to capture that moment and you'll I will always remember that photo yeah being as well that was when we're in that you know, yeah yeah that, that's and, what I want people to do you see yeah. it, it is it is a moment in history and mm. like what what I also thought about, but I don't think I've done enough to be honest. Um, is I thought if people want me to do a book or something, I, I'd just kind of have their picture and I'd ask them for just one quote mm -hmm. about what lockdown meant for them. Mm. And it's it's just yeah, but I don't know if I'll do that. So. I think you should really if you can get some more than that. that yeah, it depends on how many I get. People, it, it seems to have died off now. And and the other thing is, so many other photographers have just milked it. They've milked it for their own good. Like so, you can say that, but I haven't seen any. But I think that's probably because you see a lot more. Bit um, like how I mean, groups are, so, yeah. Well, the thing is, I I see a lot of stuff that's to do with social media. Why? Because it's what yeah. I do. You'll see a lot of photography. Why? Because it's what you do. So you're bound to see more than than your public, let's say. So, but I haven't seen anybody else doing doorstep challenge. So it was completely new to me. So don't assume uh, that just because you're seeing loads that everybody else is as well. So as one. So I know you've got another couple to do this afternoon. Um, yeah, I've got the bed crew, Anna. Yeah, you've got bed crew to do. So you've got uh, yeah, Sophie and Liam and uh, and Alex and Becca to do this afternoon. See, see how that goes, eh? With yes. dogs, no doubt. You'll have Bruce with Sophie and Liam and you'll have Tiny with uh, Alex and Becca. Completely. Really? Oh, it's, yeah. it's never simple. I had one other week where um, they had, what did they have? There were five people. They had one cat, four dogs, two guinea pigs and a chicken. So, yeah. <laughs> and no one else is doing that. It's always yeah, yeah. me who gets lumbered, isn't it, with blooming chickens and... It makes them yeah. interesting better than just pe two people just stood there in front of a doorway i guess well that's it yeah yeah that's that's what i want you know it has to have my kind of like little twist on things yeah. so I'd, i might encourage it i had one other day where this bloke did a full, full photo shoot for him we did some doorstep pictures then he like sat down with his like beer and stuff and his wife and his dog then he had this mg outside so then like photographed him in his ng mg and yeah Got some nice pictures out of it, but oh, yeah. yeah. I hope you charged extra for all those bits and pieces, John. Well, you give us 20 quid for charity, so I'm happy. Yeah. But it's, it's about charity, it's not about me. No, and it's about, you know, he might pass my name on. 
exactly uh, yeah. and it's just keeping you kind of visible through social media as well uh, so that when people do want a photographer um, coming out the other side of this then hopefully they'll think of you and stuff so. well this is it because i'm so bad at telling people who i am you know I, everyone everyone knows me but no one uses me it's like you know I'll, I'll see someone who I know really well and they've had a photo shoot with someone else. I was like, mm, why didn't you use me? Yeah. Oh, well, you want in my networking group? I was like, all right. Do you like your pictures? Well, you know. <laughs> I was yeah. like, all right, yeah. So I have to get out a bit more. Like, yeah. I'm even, I'm, someone's trying to get me to do some like video stuff on my Facebook, like kind of talking about pictures and stuff. Mm. Right, so I might, I might do that. I might be a bit more visible this year. Who knows? We'll see. We've all got our limitations. I'm a bit the same. I don't like being on video either. But you know, sometimes you just have to push yourself that little bit. Further yeah, outside, you your, comfort outside zone, your comfort don't zone, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so thanks for joining us today, John. That's yeah. been great to just chat with you and stuff. Um, uh, again, what we've done is we've just put the four different logos up there. So just tell us the four different categories of, because we've talked a lot about weddings uh, yeah. within that, but I know that you do a lot more than that. And you did mention it at the beginning, but we haven't really mentioned too no. much about the commercial side of things and the sports side of yeah, things. Yeah. So tell me what the four different logos mean. It's complicated what I do. It's so difficult to market it because, like, you want to concentrate on, like, one area, but you can't. So I've kind of got this idea in my head um, where I've got four different logos. You've got John Steele People Photographer in the middle, and then I branch off to different things. So we'll, we'll go for the green and black. The green and black is my weddings. So I'm a award-winning heights in that. Documentary, photographer, cover all the UK, try not to go abroad because I've got my kids. Um, and I'll photograph fun weddings. Yeah, so that that's that. Then I've got the yellow and black. The yellow and black is my commercial side. So I've got johnsteelcommercial.com for that. And um, yeah, I think one of the big things I've been looking at is, and every other photographer now, is personal brand photography. So I've always done like business portraits. And basically personal brand is a new terminology for that that everyone seems to jump on that bandwagon now, but it's about capturing people. It's about telling people who you are. So, and then I also looked at kind of the time because I always used to just do like half days and full days. But no one wants to devote that anymore. They just want like an hour. So I've kind of condensed all that and tell you how many pictures you get. And yeah, I can kind of create lots of different looks for you quite quickly. So you've got like different, to pieces to use for like social media or if you go in some magazine or something and it's all about you um so do that i go into businesses and i tell the story about what they do around the people photograph exhibitions um yeah not products if it moves i'll photograph it basically yeah if it talks not i don't want moving products yeah um then there's I've always done this, but I always forget to tell people. There's my family photography, which is my pinky purpley side. Um, and I'm going to have a big push on this, I think, because particularly throughout lockdown, I was like taking loads of pictures of my kids and they mean loads to me because they're not posed, they're not anything. They're just like real, like family pictures captured how I want them to be captured. The memories that I want to remember, um, so I go in and I'll, I'll, I'll tell people like, come on, let's go to like your favorite location. Let's take some activities to do. And I just capture everything, try not to set it all up. And it's just fun. Um, and I've tried to, the thing with um, portrait photography is traditionally photographers upsell everything. So they get you in for like X amount of price, which is quite cheap. And then you don't get anything. And then you sell, then you're buying prints and you're walking around, then you're walking out high pressured sales and then you've spent a lot of money. Whereas I'm old fashioned, I actually go, right, this is how much it's going to cost and this is what you get. End of. So I do that. And then the other side of it is my red and black. Um, I was looking at, I've always liked sports. I was a skateboarder, I was sponsored by Adidas and all that malarkey. 
Um, but I've always like, I was a gym instructor for five years, so I've loved sports. I thought, right, how can I photograph sports? And then fitness photography is massive at the moment. Everyone does it. Everyone does it really posed and using loads of lighting. There's about five people who do it really, really amazingly well. But then everyone else tries to copy. So, and the, some of the, um, some of the stuff out there is absolutely shocking. Um, and then you only get like one or two pictures that you, you get in your session. I was like, right, how can I create something which is more capturing? And then people can get more pictures that they can use for the social media. So it's perfect for personal trainers and things where I just come along and photograph you either training or like working out, like kind of working with a client, whatever, just to capture that. Because again, if you like get something and pause it, it takes something away from it. Whereas if you've got like an aggressive sport, so someone doing CrossFit or something, and they're like really going for it, you want to capture that. You want to capture that emo emotion and atmosphere. So yeah, that's what I do. I just go along and shove a camera in people's face when they're training. Like, yeah, get shouted at. I think, I think those photos as well, when you are taking pictures of people kind of, again, in the moment of, of, of training or, or competing, um, you know, the, those the pictures that you get when it's not a posed picture, yeah, yeah. They're just they're just phenomenal. Those, you know, when you it's can real, see, yeah, 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 yeah. Taking, putting real effort into whatever it is that they're doing, you know, whether that's a, a runner or, um, you know, somebody, uh, you know, lifting weights or whatever yeah. it might be. I mean, did you not do one? Did, didn't you do some that's to do with um, um, roller derby? Did you take some photos for roller derby? Yeah, yeah. Um, again, it's like are you, when when roller derby kind of came into this country. I had a friend who was uh, in a roller derby squad, and she kept on saying, "Can you come and take some pictures?" So I went and photographed some roller derby events, and um, they're always in like sports hall with really orange lights, and you just want there. It was just full of blocks. But there are about 12 blokes taking pictures each time. It's like, hold on, like, you're just a perv, aren't you? So <laughs> well, at least I'm a perv with a purpose. I've been asked. Um, but then I went out and I says, oh, can we do some like more kind of dramatic stuff? So I did some. Um, but again, it's, it's a funny one because everyone else is trying to do that. So mm. I have got a friend who's well into that scene, right, into... Yeah, but um, everyone else is then trying to get in with her. Mm. And I don't like playing them games, you know. Yeah. So, mm. so yeah, I'll photograph anything really, like kind of sports wise. Mm. And there's always ways to get different stuff, you know. Mm. Like what I, what I don't like doing is I don't like looking and seeing a picture and then going, I know, I'll copy that. Mm. Whereas a lot of photographers are sheep, you know, they're like, oh, all right, look at that. Let's go like replicate that. I was like, no. Nah. Just come up with your own ideas, you know. Mm. Like, and I guess I mean there is so many different sports out there that you can, uh, you know, take take photos of and stuff. But um, I would imagine for a few people that are listening and and, and watching this right now, um, if you don't know what roller derby is, look it up because I didn't know what it was until a few years back, and I'm like, what? Oh. I mean, it's quite an aggressive sport, isn't it? Really, it can be quite. You I've, know. I've still no idea it rules. Like <laughs> you, you're watching and you think, oh, yeah, right, I know it rules now. And then something changes, and it's like, yeah. what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, um, like a few years ago, I came up with um, portraits. Oh and yeah. That, yeah, yeah. That, that was like portraits of people doing sport. Yeah. And again, that was like real dramatic pictures using loads of lighting, and it's when I was a skateboarder, and I used to have people photographing me like kind of jumping down stuff and then I was a skateboard photographer and I'd then photograph other people jumping down stuff and you'd use loads of light and make it really like dramatic so I, I started doing that but now I'm taking that away I, I just want to capture because mm -hmm. if you bring lights and stuff in then you lose that element of how natural it is so mm -hmm. I try and do everything with like ambient light really mm -hmm. so there you go but there yeah go. done lots Anna yeah. Uh, so thanks ever so much, John, for kind of just sitting and talking to me with a white you. a white screen behind you, which I'm never ever gonna let you live that down, ever, ever, ever. <laughs> I do it on purpose. <laughs>
<laughs> you know what I'm like. I, I do, yeah. But thank you. That's been so lovely just to sit and talk to you and stuff. So um, that's been really emotional. <laughs> so thank you. That's 